Senator Danforth, who received the Leadership Award from uh, Westminster College yesterday. The reason why, as many of you should know, Westminster College is the site of Winston Churchill's Iron Curtain speech uh, that changed the world that day, and they have held that legacy very high and very proud. And uh, joining us here is Lord Alan Watson, a member of Great Britain's House of Lords and Parliament's Upper Chamber. You are an active... Um, member of the parliament so we'll get to that in a second but you were granted a fellowship uh last night must be uh must be awful nice must be very very proud of that that's great honor and uh, the reason was i've written a book about churchill in 1946 uh, which of course covers the fulton speech and the second one he makes six months later and i've called the book two speeches to save the world and i think they did and they led ultimately to the founding of nato and they led to the european coal and steel community uh, they really reshaped the world. Yeah. And uh, so, yes, I'm very glad of having this connection with Fulton. Sure. And um, you, you wrote the book in 1946? <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, I was going to say, okay. I, I, All right. I, I wrote it last year okay. about Churchill in 1946. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, good. Right. Is this your first time uh, here at Westminster College? No, uh, I came actually last year. And it was the 70th anniversary, not the exact date, right. uh, of when Winston Churchill made the speech in the gymnasium at, sure. the, at the college. And that was marvelous, because I was on the same stage in the same place, not at the same time. Right. And uh, Harry Truman invited his old friend, right, and said, I'll bring the media, you bring the speech. <laughs> right? That's sort of what happened? Well, you know, it was a, a real human drama, because um, Ch uh, Churchill, as you know, had lost the 1945 general election after the war. Le so had to leave Potsdam. Absolutely. Torn away from Potsdam. And... Uh, Stalin can't understand it at all, of course, and Stalin actually <laughs> says to him, do not worry, I have never lost an election. <laughs> but uh, Churchill knew he was going to lose, uh, and it was devastating, and he used to suffer from depression. He called it his black dog mood, and it really had him by the throat after that awful defeat. And uh, then he gets this letter from Westminster College, and Harry Truman has written in hand at the bottom of the letter, uh, you know, this is a fine college in my home state. If you come, I will introduce you. And Winston immediately thinks that's 18 hours in the train with the new president of the United States. So, of course, he accepts. And from that moment on, his morale begins to recover. And Clemmy, his wife, actually urges him to accept the invitation. And she says, the star-spangled waves will restore your spirits. So you're telling me that if Churchill does not come to Westminster College and give that speech, NATO doesn't exist today? Uh, what I'm saying is that he triggered a process uh, which led, in that case, to the Truman Doctrine. Uh, it also changed public opinion in Britain and in the United States, which enabled uh, the West to resist Stalin's attempt to grab the whole of Berlin, uh, the Berlin airlift. We were very lucky, by the way, because... Uh, Stalin was working flat out for a Soviet atomic bomb, but they didn't actually develop it in time to use it as a threat in the Berlin airlift. And then, of course, NATO follows. The newest fellow at Westminster College, Lord Alan Watson. Uh, important to understand the importance of NATO past yeah. so we can appreciate NATO currently and in the future. I think that's right, and I personally thought it was disappointing that when uh, President Trump went to Brussels and met with the NATO people, he admonished them that they weren't spending enough on defense, and he's right about that, quite right about that. Britain does spend more than 2% of its GDP on defense. But uh, he missed the chance to reaffirm the U.S. commitment to Article 5 of NATO, which is to accept that an attack on one is an attack on all, and that was deeply disturbing. And that meant that he missed another chance, because had he done that, he could have urged NATO to, in a way, focus on the new threat, the threat of terrorism, which we've experienced in London twice in the last month and during the election campaign. And I think uh, the defeat of terrorism ought to be integral to the purpose of NATO. Uh, let's talk about the elections last night that yes. you watched with great interest. What are your thoughts and what exactly happened yesterday? <laughs> well... What actually happened is quite simple. I mean, uh, to govern, uh, a party needs to win an overall majority in the House of Commons. And what's happened is the Conservatives have lost their overall majority. They can put together a small majority working with the Ulster Unionists, but very unstable. 
Um, so it's devastating for Theresa May. Why? Because this was her election. There was no need for an election. She called it. Right. And uh, she was very secretive about it. And she said it was purely about Brexit. Well, it wasn't purely about Brexit. And I think this not only puts an enormous question mark over her future, but I think it brings into a new dimension our negotiations about Brexit, which start in a matter of days. So what, I mean, does this mean there's is a giant wrench in the problem, seriously, but I mean, does this mean Brexit might not happen? It means that uh, she does not have a mandate for a hard Brexit. That's so, so, so is there a soft Brexit? Well, there could be. I mean, if you talk to the business community in Britain, uh, they're united in believing that it's essential that Britain retains access to the single market, and that really matters for jobs, investment, everything else. And um, at the moment, she's saying, well, you yeah. don't need the single market. The Scotland independent movement took a hit last night as well. Yes, they did. That was the one success that the Tories got. Uh, actually, the Tory party came back a bit in Scotland, and it's, it's ironic, but if they hadn't succeeded a bit in Scotland, uh, she would have been, I think, out by now. So I, I was reading this morning that she has to go to the Queen and ask the Queen to help it's to help get more um, people together for the government? Is that possible? No, it's not quite like that. She has to go and consult the Queen, and the Queen has the right to advise and to warn. Uh, but the Queen, the Queen opens Parliament, and she has to be sure that there's a Parliament to open, uh -huh. and I think there will be. Uh, Lord Alan Watson, can I ask a stupid question? We tend to watch the House of Commons from time to time. And yes. All you guys do is yell at each other. How does anything get done? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. What is that? What's never, going on? Never there? in the House of Lords. I okay. Have to say. Okay. We occasionally hiss, uh -huh. but uh, we we never shout. No, uh -huh. no, absolutely not. No, they're an ill-behaved house. The House of Commons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why you need the House of Lords because uh, when they make a mess of it in the Commons, the stuff comes to us and we have to work but, on but, it. But I mean, th that's part of the deal where where they heckle the speaker. Is that that's just the way they've been doing it, right? Yeah, it's been going on for several hundred years, you yeah. know, and uh, they, <laughs> I, I think quite often they simply shout because they don't know what to say. All right, fair enough. Now, last question for you. Uh, now, people don't know this is radio. You have a shocking full of beautiful uh, gray hair. Is that a wig or is that is that is that natural hair? Is it a wig? Well, I, you not. guys are used to wearing wigs over there. I don't know if that's you wearing the wig now or it's not. It's real. It's real. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, the newest fellowship at uh, Westminster College, a friend of the U.S., Lord Alan Watson. Sir, thank you very much for your time. The name of your book is? My, the name of my book is Churchill's Legacy, Two Speeches to Save the World, published by Bloomsbury. And tell the people, the great people of Great Britain, that they have friends in America, no matter who our leaders are. I know that, and I think it's marvelous. You got it. Thank you. Have a good trip home. Thanks very much. 949 here.